This video talks about the steady state theory. It's an elegant alternative to the Big Bang, which describes not only the origin of the universe, but its ultimate fate. It was very popular amongst astronomers in the 50s, but is now obsolete. It's been known since 1929 that the universe is expanding. In 1931, the Belgian Catholic priest and astronomer Georges Lemaitre proposed that the universe began with the explosion of something he called the primeval atom. Over the last 90 years, this theory, which is now called the Big Bang Theory, has been developed and refined to match observations. It states that the universe originated from an incredibly hot and dense state 13.7 billion years ago, and it's been expanding and cooling ever since. The Big Bang Theory is now generally accepted by most cosmologists. However, for a while, an alternative theory, the steady state theory, was very popular. This theory was developed in 1948 by Fred Hoyle, Herman Bondy and Thomas Gold. At the heart of the steady state theory is the perfect cosmological principle. This states the universe is infinite in extent infinitely old and if you take it as a whole it's the same in all directions at all times in the past and at all times in the future. In other words the universe doesn't evolve or change over time. Clearly if we take a relatively small region of the universe such as the neighbourhood of the Sun in the Milky Way then this does change over time as individual stars burn up the fuel and die and eventually become objects such as black dwarfs, neutron stars and if they're massive enough even black holes. The steady state theory predicts however if we take a large enough region of the universe perhaps hundreds of millions of light years across new stars and indeed new galaxies are continually created all the time at just the rate needed to replace the stars which have used up their fuel and have stopped shining. So over this very large region of space, again we're talking hundreds of millions of light years across, the average amount of light emitted doesn't change over time. Our Milky Way galaxy is a typical large spiral galaxy and is believed to contain over 400 billion stars. The observable universe is composed of hundreds of billions of galaxies. As I mentioned before, it's been known since the late 1920s that the universe is expanding. This means that when we look at distant galaxies, they appear to be moving away from us. The further away a galaxy is from us, the faster it appears to be moving away. This relationship, which is known as Hubble's law, is shown in simplified form in the diagram. The horizontal axis gives a distance from the Earth in megaparsecs, where a megaparsec is 3.26 million light years. Megaparsec is a unit often used by astronomers when measuring very large distances on galactic scales. The vertical axis gives the speed in kilometres per second that the galaxy is moving away from us. The rate of expansion, which is the slope in the graph, is given by something called the Hubble constant, which is normally called H0. In this very simple animation, I'm going to show you what happens, assuming the Big Bang Theory is correct, over tens of billions of years. If we take a small region of space and you imagine each white ellipse is a galaxy, then as the universe expands, the average distance between galaxies increases. There are fewer galaxies in a given region of space and the density, the average density of matter 
in this given region of space drops. In the steady state theory, even though the universe is expanding, its overall density remains constant. The theory achieves this by assuming that new matter is continuously created out of literally nothing at the incredibly small rate of one atom per hydrogen per six cubic kilometers of space per year. This matter eventually forms new stars and new galaxies. And if we take a large enough region of space, the density, which is the amount of matter in a given volume, doesn't change over time. If we rerun the animation, assuming the steady state theory is correct over billions of years, and once again you imagine each small white ellipse is a galaxy, then as the universe expands, new galaxies shown as yellow ellipses are created from this created matter. And the total number of galaxies in the region of space doesn't actually change. Indeed, if the steady state theory were true, then an observer would measure the same values of the average density of the universe, the average distance between galaxies, the average brightness of galaxies, and how the speed that galaxies are moving away from each other varies as the distance. This is the relationship known as the Hubble constant in all regions of the universe at any time in the past, no matter how far back we go, or at any time in the future. In the steady state theory, the universe is infinitely old and unchanging. One of the most elegant features of the theory is that because the universe is infinitely old, the question of its origin just doesn't arise. It has always existed in its current form. This contrasts with the Big Bang Theory, um, where there is a creation event occurred, causing the universe to come into being. Similarly, the question of its ultimate fate doesn't arise either. It will always exist. Firstly, observations taken with radio telescopes show there were more radio sources a long distance away from us than would be predicted by the steady state theory. By a long distance, I mean billions of light years. Because of the time it takes light to reach us, when we look at objects billions of light years from us, we're looking back billions of years in time. So what these observations were saying is there are more cosmic radio sources billions of years ago than there are now. This suggests the universe is changing over time, which contradicts the steady state theory. Another piece of evidence to discredit the theory emerged in 1963, when a whole new class of astronomical objects called quasars were discovered. Quasars are incredibly bright objects, which can be up to a thousand times brighter than our Milky Way galaxy, but they're very small compared to the size of a galaxy. Quasars are only found at great distances from us, meaning that the light from them was emitted billions of years ago. The fact that quasars are only found in the early universe provides 
very strong evidence that the universe has changed over time. However, the real nail in the coffin of the steady state theory was the discovery in 65 of the cosmic microwave background radiation. This is a weak radiation which fills the whole of space and is the same in all directions. It has the same spectrum as an object of a temperature of 2.7 degrees above absolute zero. In the Big Bang theory, this radiation is a relic or a snapshot from the time the universe was young and hot. And interestingly, it was predicted in 1948, almost 20 years before its accidental discovery. However, in the steady state theory, it is almost impossible to explain the origin of this radiation. For the reasons given above, by the early 1970s, the steady state theory was no longer accepted by the vast majority of cosmologists. And the Big Bang theory is now generally believed to explain the origin of the universe. However, despite this, it can still be argued that the steady state theory is a good theory as illustrated by the words of Stephen Hawking. The steady state theory was what Karl Popper would call a good scientific theory. It made definite predictions, which could be tested by observation, and possibly falsified. Unfortunate for the theory, they were falsified.